Hey everybody, it's A15 Sports Podcast back. Um, I know we took a pretty long time there before we did another episode pretty after long. the Super Bowl, but a lot of big things coming up. Um, just right before we did this video, the Bears traded the number one overall pick, so we're going to talk about that. Um, Aaron Rodgers, farewell probably, most likely, most likely coming next week. And Illinois stumbling into March, and then we'll take a little bit of a look at the, um, like Joe Lenardi's March Madness bracket. So to start it off, just what was that like 15 minutes ago? Yeah, 20 minutes ago, the Bears traded the number one overall pick to Carolina for um, Carolina's number nine pick this year, their number 61 pick, uh, first round pick in next year's draft, a second round pick in 2025, and they got DJ Morris. They got a really good receiver to go with Fields there, along with the top 10 pick. So I, I think that's a really great haul for the Bears. I think they did really well on that trade. What do you think? Yeah, I think they made out. I think they got a lot. <laughs> I mean, that's but you know what? That's what you're gonna get. You're gonna flirt that you're gonna you're gonna flirt around the first round draft pick. You're gonna get teams calling you to offer you something you can't yeah. refuse. And I mean I think that's something you can't refuse. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they had other offers from other teams. Yeah. But I mean you get you essentially just traded the first pick and now you still get the ninth. Yeah. And a first so, next year. So you're gonna have two first next well, year. Well the first next year is going to be depending on how good Carolina is this year, right? Yeah. So they could be bad again. They, I mean, the Bears. Yeah, if Carolina is bad again, it could turn out to be one of the greatest picks, you know, in recent history. I mean, if they're bad and you get another top 10 pick next year. Yeah. Carolina essentially gave you two top 10 picks in back-to-back -back years. Yeah. But I, what do you think? Obviously, Carolina, obviously Carolina wants somebody really, really, really bad. Yeah. I mean, who that is, we don't know. Um, I think I think a safe bet would be to say Bryce Young, but I I've seen that they were really they were really impressed with Anthony Richardson's NFL Combine. You know, he ran like a four point four forty, had the highest vertical of all time for a quarterback. Who was their quarterback last year? The Panthers. Uh, well, it was Baker for That's a few weeks, thought, and then it was else? like PJ so Walker. So they don't have so they, they don't have a quarterback. Don't have a quarterback. They don't so have one. So you have to think that they want Bryce Young, right? Yeah, they want. They're definitely going to take quarterback at one. And they had to move up eight spots. That's a lot because I know there were, like, I heard the Colts wanted the first pick, um, maybe even the Texans. And then, well, the Texans only had to move up one. But, you know, this is a really good haul for the Bears. I'm actually very impressed with this trade. They didn't need a quarterback. Um, Fields, in my eyes, he, he's decent. You st I still wouldn't say it's fair to completely judge him yet. I know well, I've said some things about him, but. Well, everybody has. I don't. I don't think you can judge him yet. I mean. We'll give him next year. He's got another weapon now to go with. What's Claypool, his name? Claypool. Komet played decent at the end of the year. Yeah. Um, what What was D, What is DJ Moore though? Is he a two? I would say, I would I I would say that he's a wide receiver one. He's not like a Tyree. He's not in the. He's not in your top seven wide receivers in the league. So he's gonna be he, there one, and Claypool's gonna be two. He'd be he'd that's be like pretty good. Yeah. That's I a, mean that's that's elite speed. Yeah. And um, Claypool is, Red zone. is Claypool kind of is he kind of medium. Height. He's like six four. I think he's. And, I think he's like DJ six, Moore is kind of smaller, four. right? Yeah, but he's a speed guy. Yeah. So, so you got your slant, you got your slot guy, and your yeah. slant guy, and you got yeah. your. God, if they get one more, Which, they get one more weapon. Yeah. I mean, obviously they need to do more. Like, it's not just because you get this. Like that doesn't mean they're yeah. gonna be. They're gonna go from three win. How many wins they had last year? I think they only had three wins last year. You're not going to go from three wins to 12 just by DJ Moore. Yeah. So, so you need – I mean, you probably just went from three. I mean, he might he might win you two games. Yeah. So you probably – I mean, I don't know. They, they still need some work to be done yeah. in the trenches. Yeah. And you, but, you could get a really good offense alignment at pick nine. Yeah. Or you could – I know that a lot of Bears fans were um, wanting that wide receiver out of uh, Ohio State, Jackson Smith, um, the Jigba. Is that how you say it? I have no idea. Oh. And I'm not even going to try. Um, I think that's how you say it, JSN. But uh, he's he's a really good um, prospect, it looks like. I mean, he even ran the fastest three-cone drill that they've ever seen at the Combine. Um, there's a lot of guys out of Georgia who are good on defense who would press at the Combine. So it'll be interesting, but it was a really good trade. For yeah, the, I just uh, – I, I think things are – you can see – you can kind of see things starting to, like, assemble and fall into place mm -hmm. for the bears mm -hmm. they're not quite there but 
They're better than where they were. They're better two or than three they years were. Ago. They're better than they were twenty. They're better than they were thirty minutes ago. Yeah, a lot better than they were thirty yeah. minutes ago. But they, you kind of knew this was going to happen. Yeah. Whoever they, whoever they traded that to, they were going to get a haul back. Yeah. You knew that. Mm-hmm. You just didn't know what team and what they were going to offer. Yeah. So. But good on that for the Bears. That's a really good haul for them. Um, speaking speaking about trades, probably next week sometime. There's going to be a lot of shit going down soon. Yeah. There are a lot of big name free agents out there. Um, Hopkins also supposed to get traded. But yeah. next week, it seems Rodgers is going to get traded to the New York Jets. Um, the, the Jets have the 13th pick this year, so the Packers would end up with pick 13 and 15. Um that's pretty. That would be pretty, pretty impressive. But and then they want a conditional pick next year if he plays again next year. I don't to where know that would why, become a second. I don't or a first. know why they're trying to push him out the door. I really don't. I, I think they should be catering to him. Well, I you're not going to be as good with Love as you are with Rodgers at least next year, right? I know, but we had Rodgers this year, and and I'm not saying it's all his fault. He played injured. But I think it's just time for both sides to move on. And I don't like the whole every year you got to wait so long for him to well, make Well, he a likes drama. I mean, let's just. Well, I, maybe he does, but it, the media pushes it a lot. But, you know, I, they've, they've seen him twice this past week. They flew out there to California. Who, the Packers? Um, or the, the Jets. Jets. And supposedly the Jets owner, um, something Johnson, maybe yeah. Woody Johnson. He doesn't want to pay the full sixty million on Rogers' contract, so I think the more the Packers are willing to pay, the better compensation they'll get in a trade for Rogers. But if 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 they're trying to fleece I, you, then I, I wouldn't make the trade. I hope to God he stays in Green Bay, and I know Bears fans don't, and but I do not want to see him twice a year. Yeah. Not to say a healthy Dolphins team isn't better. They, I mean, they they wouldn't be better at the quarterback position, but they would be better everywhere else. Yeah. The Dolphins are more talented than the Jets, but Aaron Rodgers makes them a very formidable opponent. And, I mean, he's had – in recent years, he's had the Dolphins number yeah. with Green Bay, and now if he goes to the Jets. Yeah. He I knows just, how to win I Miami. I don't want to see it. Um, But according to everything I've seen, I've seen that – At least it's it in, wouldn't be – it's not like they're getting a twenty-year-old. Yeah, they're, it would be a probably one-year, year-to-year basis. Yeah. So, and I wouldn't say any more than two years, to be honest. I'd say I don't this even year, know how it would be more than a year at the shit he pulls every year. Yeah, why would you? Why would you just? I would just sign him to one year and then see what it is after that year. There's still, there's still two years, maybe even three years left on his contract, um, and I, it's up to the Jets, but. Well, really, it's up to Rodgers because everything I've read says that um, the decision is completely up to him. If he wants to go there, then that's going to happen. But what if he wants to stay? I don't know. I don't know how that's going to work because I even just seen a thing that um, Mark Murphy, president of the Packers, just used. Not not like everybody makes a big deal out of everything, but he said um, Rodgers' name and was talking about him. He used it in the past tense. And it sounds to me like this is coming to an end. The Packers want to see what they have in love. And then worst comes to worst, if love's not the guy what, and you're not what? that good and you're not that good this year, I'd say trade everything and get Williams next year in the draft at one. That's the way I look at it. Um, so you mean tank for I would, the one for number one? Yeah, if, 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 love, if you don't think love's the guy yeah, after how, five or six games. Well, by that time, I don't know. I don't know. A lot's going to happen, but I definitely think he's getting moved. Um, I'm Fucking I'm grateful bullshit. for I'm grateful for all that he did as a Packer, um, all that he accomplished. Me being able to go to school and not having to listen to Bears fans shit because they like literally never beat us well, while he was quarterback. That's probably going to come to an end if he leaves. Yeah. Um. But because right now I feel like the Bears are going up and the Packers are just like floating. I feel like we're still a better team than the Bears right now. Even with Jordan but, Love. With Jordan Love, I think we still are a better team than the Bears, yes. I just but, trust well, Justin we'll find Fields out. more than Jordan Love. I, I don't know. I haven't seen him enough. Well, nobody has. That's why I'm excited to see him. I'm excited for a new chapter. At some point in life, you got to move on from things. You can't just hold on to him forever. And Rodgers, even, even if he played in Green Bay one more year, I mean, it is what I don't think we would win the Super Bowl. 
I really you don't. You ain't going to win the Super Bowl next year with Love. I think I'm, you have well, a better chance with Rodgers. Well, that's a fair statement, but you just can't. I think he's your best bet for the next three years, Well, quite honestly. Well, we had our shots I the do. past five years, and at some point you got to move on. If Aaron Rodgers signed tomorrow signed a three-year contract with Miami, I'd be the happiest person on earth. Well, then he'd be playing another six years in the NFL because he's still got three years left on this deal. Oh. They would maybe if they just picked it up. Oh. But just one thing, I want to say some of Rodgers' stats here. Um, he had 520 touchdown passes, and he rushed for 39. So a total of 559 touchdowns. Um, that's a Packers record as far as passing touchdown goes. Beats out Brett Favre. Um, including the postseason, he played over 252 games as a Packer. Packers were 158, 85, and 1 when he started. One. What was the one? I think they tied against the Vikings a few years ago, 2019. I do not remember that. Um, 11 playoff appearances, 10 Pro Bowls, 8 NFC North titles. So more than half the time he's been the starter – He's won the NFC North, um, four MVPs, and one Super Bowl win. Only 117 interceptions. Obviously, everybody should know that Rodgers has the best touchdown to interception ratio in NFL history. Um, and then he threw for nearly 60,000 yards, 59,000 yards, um, just 2,500 short of taking over far for the franchise record in yards. So no doubt what Rodgers' name and – you know, he's going to be in the Hall of Fame first ballot, and he's going to have his name I there think at Lambeau he's the Field. the best quarterback the Packers have ever had. I agree. I, I 100% I agree. Think he he's way better than Favre. on Brett Favre. And Favre was great, but Favre's interceptions kill him compared to Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. I know that Packer fans have a lot. Their brain kind of, like, explodes with Rodgers because they love him and they hate him at the same time. But they were almost unbeatable in Lambeau Field for 15 years. I want to what you should have figured out his home record because I you just didn't you just didn't like when they lost a home game like it would like if you have season tickets to the Packers for the last 15 years I bet you you've only seen I was going to say 20 losses 91 wins 23 losses and one tie I was going to say over the last 15 years you've seen 20 home losses like, I just it's impressive. I mean, it's other than maybe Tom Brady at home when he was with the Patriots. What other quarterback in NFL history has that good of a record at home? Um, nobody in Mahomes will get there. Mahomes, when it's all said and done, he's going to be the GOAT. Yeah, he of, should be of the entire National Football League's history. I he's going to blow Brady away in stats and everything, which. That's all this world is now is stats, especially the NBA. But so if any, you can't I don't tell me. know that he will get seven. That That's is hard. the only thing I'm not sure on. I He'll know he, I know he's got as many as Brady had at this age, but he's yeah. he's got more, right? I think, but I don't know that. I think they're about the same. They might be the same. I don't know that he plays till 45. I don't know that he's winning a Super Bowl at 42 like Brady was because he's not that type of a quarterback. Mm-hmm. He likes to scramble. He likes – he's a, just a different quarterback yeah. than Brady was. I think Brady was fit to last longer in the NFL, which is the reason I think seven's going to be tough. I absolutely think he gets to five. I think he's going to have three by the time he's 30. I think he's 27 and he's right already now. got he's already got one Super Bowl, so you can already – Well, no, but I'm saying oh. the moment you win a Super Bowl, you can be talked about as being the greatest of all time. Yeah. So he's already got two. Mm-hmm. So I don't want to – Two MVPs. He, um, he's a stud. But, yeah, I think he's going to be the new I guy. think he's way more talented than Brady ever was. Yeah, well, I mean, we all – I mean, Brady was – Brady would just – Pick, but Brady knew what you were going to call defensively and yeah. still beat you. Yeah. As were Mahomes, it can beat you with his legs. Like his arm strength. His arm. Brady could never beat you with his legs unless he was going to jump for a quarterback sneak at yeah. the half yard line. Yeah. Which he was great at. But the thing that Brady did that, um, and I'm not saying that Mahomes doesn't do this, but, you know, Brady's work ethic and the drive that he had to win, you know, you don't see that in at a lot that of guys. Age. But uh, I think Mahomes has got that, and they got a pretty damn good team around him with a lot of weapons. I mean, I, I honestly think it's Kansas City's next five years to lose every year. To lose every year. Yeah. Now, now listen, they've played in great games. They're they're not 
un, they're not as unbeatable as Brady and the Patriots were when they were winning. I think that I think that you can beat the Chiefs because I mean they've they've I mean it's happened. They've yeah. lost. But I yeah. just I don't think they're as unbeatable as when Brady was with the Patriots. That run was historic, which Mahomes is on that is on that path, but I just Yeah. But with that being said, before Mahomes, you know, Rogers just we'd never seen a quarterback like what Rogers was able to do. You know, and there's a lot of things that I would say only Rodgers and Mahomes are able to do as far as like the no look passes and just dropping. I it in still the have never seen anybody throw on the run like Rodgers has done and just fling it sit 60 yards down the field. Yeah. Just fling it. Yeah. And it just looks like he's flinging it. Mm-hmm. I know Mahomes can do it, but I've never seen anyone do it like Rodgers. Mm-hmm. And just it was just it was it, it was it was a joy to watch. Yeah. And I'm going to fucking hate him now. He was my favorite quarterback in the league, and I don't know that he will be if he goes yeah. to the Jets. In fact, he won't be. <laughs> but well, he won't be my. I mean, he'll still have a special place in my heart, but he won't be my favorite quarterback anymore. Well, he'll always be my favorite quarterback. Yeah. But you know, I'll move on to you know love. But with that being said, um, like I said, I just want to thank you know Aaron Rodgers for everything he's done as being a Packer and things that he's accomplished and so many memories that I'll forever hold. Um, and he really is the, in my opinion, the best quarterback of all time, just talent wise, you know, Mahomes is going to surpass him, but that's just my opinion. I mean, um, he's won a Super Bowl, so you can argue. Yeah. And I'm not, and I don't want to boot, I'm not booting Aaron Rodgers out, but I just think, you know, time's come to an end and this is probably it. And this is what it seems. I know the media is driving it like crazy. They want him to go to New York. Um, well, so that's all I got to say are, about are, that. Uh, while we're sticking around, it, since we're talking about NFL, before mm-hmm. we go on to March, um, where is Lamar Jackson going to end up? Um, probably back in Baltimore. I mean, franchise I'm going to tell you that for a couple of days there, I really thought before Miami came out and said no, I really thought it could work out down there, being from there, the way the NFL's going to that type of quarterbacks, like the Dolphins getting that type of quarterback. Yeah. I, I don't surprised. know. I can't I can't say that I I two two is my guy. They just picked up his option today. Did you see that? Yeah. Um two is my guy. I like him a lot. He's a very, very good quarterback. And the only thing about Tua though is if you're gonna sign it, like I know they picked up his option, right? So what at now? His fifth year option. Yeah, but I'm saying like he's so he's essentially playing on a one year contract, right? Is this will this be his fourth year in the NFL this season coming up? 20, 21, I 22, 23. This might only be his third. No, this is his fourth year in the NFL, I believe. Didn't he come in the same year as Herbert? I feel last year. Yeah, we, last year, year we were waiting. Well, let's just look it up. But anyways. So maybe this is his third year, but I mean, I'm saying eventually you're going to have to sign him to a yeah. long-term deal. Right. Mm-hmm. So if that's what you want to do, well, I would take Lamar over to a, well, I think most people would, but I think my thing is, is if you're going to sign to a, to a, what seven, what are, what are quarterbacks getting seven? These other, these quarterbacks that are young against seven year deals. What? Probably five, five to six. Yeah. Two fifty, like, so if you're going to sign him seven year two fifty, which it might be more, might be less, I don't know. I'm just saying, you have to then continue to surround him with Tyree Kills, Jalen Waddles. Okay, you can't just keep Tua and then throw wideouts out there that are Joe Schmo and Billy Bob. Yeah, like you have to continue to surround him with because that's the type of quarterback he is. He's not going to pull. He's not going to make someone elite. He needs elite around him, and that's okay. Yeah, because that's okay. there's not 32 different there's not 32 quarterbacks, quarterbacks that do that. That can do that. There's about a handful. So four or five. And they've already said to his accuracy is why a lot of people like him in the NFL. Mm-hmm. So if that's the case, you need to keep surrounding him. Like I know you've got Tyree Kill for the next couple of years. You're probably gonna have Jalen Wild for the next couple of years. So you got one of the best one two punches in the league. Yeah. So um and the thing is, is when you start talking about you getting another number one. Like you having three great wide receivers on a team, it doesn't always work out because then one's dramatic. He's mad that he's not getting touches. So mm-hmm. I almost think if you can have two, 
great wide receivers and a great running back, I think that's where I What would, if Miami gets Derrick Henry? It seems like he might well, be traded. We were, I was going to bring that up. I mean, Vegas has them as the favorites to land him, and the Dolphins have been doing a lot the last couple of days to restructure their cap space. Yeah. Um, they cut Byron Jones. They restructured Tyree Kills. Deal they restructured. Somebody else. Bradley Chubb. Yeah. To 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 make money to make, make more for this year. And if they go out and make a splash like Derrick Henry, like they did last year with Tyreek, I don't know how they're not favorites to win the AFC East. Oh, the AFC East. I yeah, mean, I would say I they're mean, favorites. I mean, Tua, but if the Jets, if Tyreek, the Jets get Aaron Rodgers, it's going to be a lot of people favored in the Jets. I know, but they don't have. They won't have a Derrick Henry, a Jalen Waddle, or a Tyreek Hill. Garrett Wilson's good. Their uh-huh. defense is pretty good. Well, you're still going to have Josh Allen. And the there. Dolphins' defense is going to be great with Vic Mangio. This is the Dolphins. Oh, are that gonna, was a hell of a hire. The Dolphins are going to be, if they go out and make a splash for a running back, and maybe like a, get an offensive lineman. Um, I personally the, think the the, the the sky's the limit for this team. I get I I understand the want for Derrick Henry, and Derrick Henry's a superstar, no doubt about it. If you don't get him though. You still have a second round pick this year, right? Yeah, but there's all who else is on the market? It's I'm just saying that you could get a you decent get Saquon, guy in the draft. Right? Wait, Sa- 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 he got tagged. He got tagged. Name. Saquon Barkley. He got okay. tagged, so he he's not available. Who Pollard else? Pollard got tagged. So I I think I think you really got to hit this one from the draft. Okay, but where else is he? Where else? Like, where else do you see him going? Henry, Oakland, Vegas. Well, not Oakland. <laughs> You know Vegas. That's yeah. No, Vegas. I'm just giving you shit. Um, no, I I don't know. Probably probably Miami. Um, he, I, I could just, see him playing just, another year in Tennessee. Fits, he just fits. Like it just seems like it's a match made in heaven for him to go down there. Like team that's ready to win now. And and to be honest, in my lifetime, there hasn't been a Dolphins team more ready to win now than this year's team. Yeah. To to go for four consecutive seasons in a row, or would it be three? Missed the playoffs at ten and six. This would be the fourth winning season in a row. Yeah. Now I know they're only going on two years in the if they next year make it, it'll be two years in a row. But like they need to do whatever they can do to win now because they're in that they're in that. Like this is they're ready. Yeah. Like and I that's why I think Derrick Henry puts them over the edge. Honestly, if he comes to the Dolphins, I mean they're a top ten team in the league. I think they're already flirting with top ten in the league. I would say even without I would, would Derrick Henry. They're definitely a top twelve team in the league. But Henry but, puts you in that. Henry yeah. puts you in that. Yeah. I mean, you're you're telling me him coming out of the backfield and Henry and then Waddle and Hill? How who what do you what do you call him defensively? How are you gonna stop any of that? Blitz blitz two of. But as far as two know. of then he just hands it off. Yeah. I don't know. It'd be a hell of an offense. Or he just throws or they run I don't know. It would be a fucking hell of an offense. But we'll see. Maybe it happens. Um, one thing that I want to touch on, like you said with Lamar, I do find it shocking that nobody wants to uh, – there's no interest in Lamar, but there's a boatload of interest in Deshaun Watson when that came out last year with all the things he's done. They're think- both very talented. Um, I think the non-tender uh, – I think Lamar I think Lamar tag, brings baggage. Well, I, I, and I, I think teams don't I, – I just think some owners aren't – especially – they're older, and they're just all set in their ways. I just don't know that. Look, I would be all for it if they said tomorrow, hey, we signed Lamar Jackson. Um, we're just not sold on Tua because of his injuries. I mean. Well, I think that's one reason why they don't want to pull, um, you know, go after Lamar Jackson because they're worried about his potential injuries. I mean, the last two years he hasn't lot. played um, a full season. I'm not saying he's not a stud, but he's 26 years old, which is still young. I'm not denying that. But when you play the way that he plays, you know, it might not last as long. That's the problem with those quarterbacks. Eventually, it's going to slow down. And when you're in your And he doesn't have an agent. He doesn't have an agent. And he wants $230 million guaranteed like Watson got. And I think the owners are against giving anybody that type of money. So they're probably pissed at the Browns for giving them that kind of money in the first place. So maybe they're trying to prove a point. Um, I don't know, but I don't know where. So where, where where do we think he ends up? Where does he end up? I think he's gonna play one more year in Baltimore. I would agree because I don't know. 
what other team would would make. I don't know. If the Falcons I, I thought go it was on, Miami. the Panthers, the Patriots are out on them. Miami's out on them. I don't know who's going to go after them. First off, I don't know. Yeah, we won't we won't get into New England. But that, I'm just not. I am not sold on Mac Jones. Yeah, neither am I. So I'm not. I'm not going into that. We can save that for another day. Yeah. That's for another day, um, though. Let's let's ramble. We can into, go into March. Yeah, we'll go into March here. So Illinois stumbling into March. I'm sure most of you guys watched the game last night. They lost 79 to 76. Uh, Penn State beat them every time this year, three and zero. They enter them enter the tournament 20 and 12. They are probably they're going to make the tournament. Um, they'll probably be like an eight nine seeds. What Lenardi has them I'm at. I'm hoping they're a ten. Yeah. Because the eight nine then plays the one sixteen. So if you're the ten, you play the two seven. I mean. Um, oh, that's what I got. So as Larn Lenardi said that they'd be an eight. And then the one seeds Alabama. So if they win, they'd play against Alabama in the second round. Bless you. Fuck. Hey, Oklahoma beat Alabama, and Oklahoma played like shit all year. Um, we'll go over some stats from that game. So Hawkins had 17, 5, Hawkins 5, was and great. 2. I was at it. Yeah, he played really well. Um, Dane, 13 and 7. Meyer, 7. Bad shooting day, 0 for 5 from 3. RJ, 4 and 3, and a re- few rebounds. Um, Shannon Jr. at 19, 5, and 4, and Goody was 2 of 4 from 3. The, pr- the, the problem bench. with this team is you feel like this team's made for March because they've got guys who can go get you 20. They've got Dane if you want to slow the slow the game down and throw it into them. They're lengthy. Um, they're quick. I think getting Jaden Epps back is going to help. I think that game versus Penn State hurt because – you didn't have your point guard um, getting you into motions, getting you into your offense, your sets. And I know that sounds little, but we don't play at this level, so we don't know how hard it is for someone else to do that when they didn't yeah. do it all year. Yeah. So that plays a big role. But this team is just so hard to talk about because they've won very – I mean – They've won huge games versus UCLA versus Texas. I go back to early in the season, I know, but they played really. They played Virginia down to the wire. Mm-hmm. I mean, down to the wire. You played Purdue without Epps. Honestly, it looked like they were going to pull. They were going to pull that one out when they were down twenty four, and they came mm-hmm. back and they tied it. They played well at Iowa, but they fell short. They played well at Indiana without Shannon Jr., but fell short. They played well yesterday but fell short. I just think if this team, what what you've said it all year, they suck at free throws. They do. They Yet, suck at free throws since Brad's been there. And I'm yes, not saying that's Brad's fault, but yesterday they missed five of six free throws. Now 12 of night, 64 percent. It's not great. I know, but it's not you wanna, you awful. You want to get to 70. It's not, I mean, it's not awful, but it's not good. I'm not saying it's good, but what I'm saying is everyone was like, well, Penn state, made more like Penn state missed more free throws in Illinois. Cause I was like, well, Penn state, here's the thing that happened yesterday. The times where Illinois missed their free throws in the time of the game crucial. hurt. So sure. The free throw line looks more, looks like Illinois was better because they made more, but it was when you missed the free throws. So Illinois was down four and got to the free throw line. They missed two. So Penn state comes back. So now you're down six when you could have been down two. Okay. So now you're down six. Illinois goes to the free throw line, misses two again. They come down, you're down eight instead of six. So so then you look up when it when it should be a two point game and you're down eight. It was and and then they did it again. They were down eight, they came down, got fouled, and Shannon made one and missed the other. So now you're down seven when you should have been fucked, even if you just make so say you make three of those, you're down four instead of seven. Mm-hmm. Now in college basketball, that's you know, that's two possessions instead of potentially four. Yeah. And you know, late in the game, under three minutes, you can hold it for 30 seconds. The clock dwindles. If you're losing in college basketball under three minutes, you better only be losing by a possession or two. Because if you're losing by three or four and that team holds the ball and makes free throws, you really don't have a chance. So it was when Illinois missed their free throws yesterday that hurt them. Yep. Um, but 
And Meyer can't go over five. I mean, come on. And the dude's got to be better defensively. The dude just gives up all the time. He doesn't fight through screens. He's always late. I know he blocks a lot of shots because he's lengthy. And he, he some a lot of times he just gets lucky and puts his hand up. But thir- next Thursday, if they play Thursday or Friday, he has to fight through screens. This team has to make free throws, and this team cannot go in scoring droughts. With all that being said, I got a question for you. I don't. What I've seen from Ty Rogers lately, I don't understand why he wasn't playing more yesterday. Because he plays, I, I know he plays really good defense. I don't know he why. He plays hard. There's a couple of things. I don't know why we didn't see a lot of Sincere Harris yesterday. So I think this is what happens since they're freshmen. They're not known as scorers. So when you have both of them out there, it's kind of like we're not going to get – where's the offense going to come from if those two guys are out there? You know I, what I mean? I, I get that, but I don't think anybody on that team Illinois, plays harder Sometimes Ty Illinois – well, I would argue Sincere Harris does. I think he plays hard. I'm just not impressed. I don't think he has any offense. I, like he doesn't I think he offers you – I, I love both of them. I, I hope and I hope they're both four years. I, I really like Jaden Epps. I really like Jaden Epps to create in mm-hmm. the lane. Mm-hmm. I really like Ty Rogers the way he plays, and I really like Sincere Harris dog. He just reminds me of Tre- of Chester Frazier. If you're an Illinois fan, you'll get it. Um, he's on the floor. They're both on the floor. Th- those are the guys you like to bring off under the 16 media timeout and kind of ju- rejuvenate you if you're not there. But you can't be down by 10. Yeah. You can't be down by 6 because they're coming in to do that. They're not coming in to go on a 5-0 scoring run with those guys. Okay? So this team has to get off to better starts. And there's only one more fucking game to do it too. Yeah. I'm sick of the one game bad, one game good, one game down 15, make a good comeback so everyone's back on your bus. This team needs to play well from the start. Because if they do, they literally can beat any team in the nation. We've seen it. They tied Purdue from down 24. They beat UCLA. They beat Texas. It's there. They've done it. Mm-hmm. So, sure, if they meet the one seed in the second round, if they even get past it, I don't even know if Illinois is going to win a game in the tournament. It's got to be depend on who they play. And you'll know. How the, they come out. And you'll know in the first. I'll tell you this. You'll know in the first five minutes of that game how that game's going to go because Illinois is such a second half team. It's, it's sickening how much better they are. So for all these people that say Brandon would don't make adjustments, you're stupid. You're wrong. He didn't make an adjustment to Loyola game. I get that, but they are such a better second half team. It's, it's, it's they're They're pl- like, it's crazy. Do you think they just play harder? Cause they know, all right, now we got to lock well, in. Like yeah, I feel I, like the first, sometimes the first 10, 15 minutes of a game, you might just be feeling, you know. I also it out. think that that team that it thinks everything is going to work in the first half goes into the second half, and that coach is like, okay, well, this has worked, so we're going to keep trying it. But they obviously have a backup plan, but they're going to stick to what's working. And Underwood and his coaching staff are like, okay, this is what they're doing. So he counters it, and then it works. Because I heard Chris Collins from Northwestern say in the second half of the game, Illinois switched what they were doing in the first half. And they continued to run what was working in the first half, and it didn't work. Yeah. So Underwood is a good coach. He is very stubborn sometimes. And I think that's where a lot of fans are like, okay, we, we like, you can be stubborn, but like for March, like make, a, make adjustments. If, if you're getting beat, he, Brad's one of those coaches where he thinks he's smarter. Which I'm glad I want a coach like that. But sometimes you got to be like, okay, he outsmarted me. So in the second half, we're going to change it up. Because sometimes Illinois doesn't. But I still think there are. Uh, I wouldn't want to play Illinois because they're 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 gonna they're gonna beat the hell out of you with yeah. with Rogers, Harris. I mean, they're gonna be all up in you. But as far as they go, I I don't. They're either going to lose in the first round, or I could see them making an elite eight run. They're that good. Yeah, it'll be interesting. It'll be a lot of fun to watch. Um, and I'll say this: this is the most open this bracket I've ever seen. This I agree. Is the most open of a bracket I've ever seen. Now it might be one of your blue bloods that end up winning, or one of your one or two seeds, but there are so many teams that can make a run. So many teams because the field's so wide open. 
So talking about the field, we'll jump into it really quick. I got some of uh, Lenardi's predictions here for the one and two seeds. So for the one seeds, they got Houston, Bama, UCLA, and Kansas. Um, and the two seeds are Arizona, Texas, Purdue, and Baylor. That's what he's got. And then last four in, he's got Penn State, Oklahoma State, Rutgers, Utah State. First four out, Arizona State, Nevada, UNC, and Wisconsin. Is this as of today? This was as of last night at like 10 o'clock. Even after Penn State won, they were the last four in. This was last. This was last night when I looked at it on ESPN. This is after the Illinois game. Do they not have any wins? And then has Kansas as number one overall seed. And then it is important um, for people to know that right now Kansas isn't playing with uh, Bill Self. But he, pro- I, I would assume he's going to be back. He, he's going to for the, for the March Madness. I don't know tournament. what happened, but I don't know either. Something medical reasons. Um, I mean, I think he's. I think he's good. I think he's. They said he's going to make a full recovery, and it wasn't nothing major. I mean, obviously, mm-hmm. it was major if they addressed it right then. But I mean, as far as procedure wise, I think everything's good. And Kansas could end up winning the Big Twelve tournament. They're still in it. I, Kansas is going to be my pick to win it all. I like. I mean, they got they got Grady Dick. Jalen Wilson's a really good player. Um, the Dewan they just Harris play a point lot guard. Of very close games, which they scares do. me in March. They do, but there's going to be a lot of close games in March. Oh, I know. It ain't going to be easy. No, but what I'm saying is Kansas seems to play a close game every time they play. So they're really, really good, and they always find a way to win, and I think that's a lot of Bill Self. Yeah. But they just – I could see him repeating. I could. It's going to be hard, but I could see it. I don't. I don't think they're um, – I think there's – I just think their inability to sometimes create – separation from teams will hurt them in March because they do, they're not able to, I mean, I think they've played the most two possession games in the, in college basketball. And they've also got six losses, right? Do we know their record? I don't They might. They, I, I'll, I'll tell you here. Cause what I'm saying is I think the best team in the country is Alabama. That would be, that's who I would probably pick to win it all. I've seen enough from them, which sucks because I think Illinois probably will be in their side. I what's their record? Uh, twenty six and six. It's a pretty good. That's a pretty no, damn that's good record. A great record. It's one of the best records in college basketball besides Houston. I just, I just, I don't know. I, Alabama is a really good team. They got a lot of good talent. Um, just the whole thing with Brandon Miller and the other teammates going on. That's with, why I think. I, I don't know what's going to happen. What if he randomly gets pulled from the team? In the middle of the tournament, you know, because he is their best player. Well, I mean, they better they better have some evidence then, because if not, Alabama's suing somebody. Yeah, um, but it looks like the Big Ten's going to get nine teams in. SEC is going to get eight. Big Twelve eight. ACC five. Big East five, and the Pac twelve three. And then from there, it's just you know, kind of the no name conferences that anybody knows about. So, well, I that's all I got for the stats. the the whole Big Ten. Shit is annoying. Um, you know, thinking that they get in and sure a lot of the teams lose, but who else are you putting in? Yeah, they're always gonna put in the power five coverages. Well, that's what I mean. Are you gonna put in mountain more mountain west teams, more ACC team, more AAC teams? AAC is the American Athletic Central Conference, Conference, whatever, yeah. yeah. So so what like, you, like I don't I don't understand like. Don't put them in like because they lose like, a lot of teams lose. How many times has Duke been favored and lost? Yeah. So every fucking year. Yeah. Besides the five years they've won it, it's hard to win in March. Yeah, Duke's been playing I mean, really well lately. Bayheim coached for forty five years and won once, mm-hmm. with Melo, yeah. one of the greatest players of all time. Mm-hmm. So. How hard is it to win in March? It's let's, extremely hard. Let's see if we can phone up. And then you got to do it. You got to do it. 64, 32, 16, 8, 4. You got to win six, six times. Games. Six times. On and top of maybe winning three games in four days in your conference tournament the week before. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe that's good that Illinois lost. They go home and they don't got to play fucking Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And then... Playing again it potentially probably, Thursday or Friday. Probably not do nothing Monday and ha- and practice Tuesday for the team. Yeah. At least now you're going to be able to go out Monday and be yeah. like, okay, we the two were playing. Like, let's dissect this film until we can't no more. Tuesday, 
practice. Wednesday's probably your travel day. But I'm going to tell you what, this weekend that team better be in the fucking gym shooting free throws. Can and, get on them? And Dane better and Dane better be shooting those left-hand hook shots and better be making them. Or go to your right. Yeah. Because he missed a lot of cookies yesterday. And here's the thing. Oh, that's one thing I wanted to ask you. Why did they get away from going to the paint? They were doing that early on in the game. And Coleman Coleman was having his way. He's way taller and lengthier than the guy guarding. I He's don't like, know why Illinois hasn't in. done that all freaking year with Coleman Hawkins. He's 6'10". Yeah. If someone is 6'7 or 6'8 or even 6'9 on him, or hell, even 6'10", put <laughs> Coleman in the paint. And let him back down because Coleman from six to seven foot range is the best player on our team. Yeah. He will he will turn around and shoot over you. I I hope Col- I I know I hope Coleman Hawkins comes. You don't think he's going to the draft, do you? If Coleman, I'd be shocked. I'd be shocked. If look, at, this is a hot take, but if Coleman Hawkins comes back and I see what Coleman Hawkins did yesterday versus Penn State, shooting fadeaway seven eight footers, I he might be. In my Big Ten Player of the Year, if he, yeah, if he just put, I think the best position for him to succeed in is from free throw line down. Absolutely, and, 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 and he that, plays a lot more at the top of the key and, for, for some. And reason. that's not to say when you're in transition or you're running fast and Coleman's at the top of the key or Coleman's on the corner and he wants to shoot a three. Yeah, shoot it. He's a good shooter when he shoots, but it's when the mf'er hesitates and hesitates and then goes to the right and shoots. He's a good spot shooter. Coleman Hawkins is my favorite player in Illinois. I just you never know. He, you know, teams are gonna be I after love him. Coleman in the, Hawkins. Teams are gonna be after him in the transfer portal next year, so we'll see if he ends up. But he him. has a really good relationship with Brad Underwood. Yeah. I think he comes back. I think you lose Meyer and you lose Shannon. Well, you definitely lose Meyer and Shannon because it's well, their you, last year eligibility. You don't, no, it's not. Not Shannon's. It's Myers, though. It's Myers. Shannon is a junior. I don't know. Shannon Jr. has won't. Well, Shannon Jr. has his COVID year. No, Shannon's a senior, but he has his COVID year if he wants to use it. Mm-hmm. So if Shannon go, what I think is going to happen is it's going to be the I the whole IO thing. He's going go to go to the draft. Compare him to IO, but no, I don't mean. I know, I know that. what you mean. Okay. He's going to go to the draft. He's going to get feedback that he's really, really good. He is really, really good and really explosive, but he's raw. He's not ready yet, and that's okay. Yeah. So yep. come back and come back and 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 have a legacy at Illinois. Be remembered twenty five years from now, because twenty five years from now, I would assume is going to walk into a game and the whole place is going to rise just like it did when they introduced that Darren Williams was there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it'll be interesting. I'm excited to watch them. I'm excited for the games to start. Um, I can't wait to watch. You, you know what? I just can't wait to watch Illinois in March. And I know I'll it'll be pins and needles, and I'll be sitting there, running my mouth and talking shit. But it's a joy to have them back in March. Mm-hmm. They went five consecutive years with not being in March. This is the fourth year in a row where they've won twenty seasons. Twenty seasons. Twenty games. Twenty games. Fourth year in a row that they're making the tournament. They would have made it the COVID year. They didn't. This is the fourth year they've made it. Um, it shows Brad Underwood's able to have stability Mm -hmm. and it shows that he's able to coach in the transfer portal era where he gets guys and they look like they mesh and sometimes they don't sometimes i think this group doesn't gel no they don't but some games they do and that's why they're dangerous yeah we'll see maybe they'll end up gelling when you need them to most um um well I don't really have anything else to add. I was going to talk a little bit about uh, so now Sunday. Are you going to be able to do a video Sunday, like maybe later in the evening? Yeah, uh, we I, could so, do one and so, do the bracket. So I have. So it would have. We could. We could try to make one work, but I have a thing where I go up to Carbos with some some guys and we pick six or seven teams, mm-hmm. and whoever those teams last the longest, you get a point per game, per round. But I don't think that's till night. I think it's at like seven or eight. Okay. Yeah, if we if we find what a good time, time do they do? Well, I I don't think they do it. I don't till think like, they do it till like five or five thirty. I mean, if you want to if you want to do a video when it starts, yeah, we could do that. And then and then we'll I talk could, about we could it just as it leave, goes. We could just I could just make sure I just got to be there to do that yeah. thing. Be- well, um, me and Jake are going to be doing a bracket, 
Uh, so the top three winners will get a shirt with our logo on it. And have we told people about this? I've told some people that I talked to about it, but I'm going to tell them now. Um, and I'm going to send a link. I'll send a, I'll put a link out either. We can put it out on Twitter or Instagram. We'll, we'll get a link out there to you guys, um, to join it. Me and Jake will be in the tournament as well. I think it's up to maybe 25 to 30 people can do it. Uh, that's just a limit that ESPN would let me do. Um, and the number one winner will get a fifty dollar uh, Culver's gift card, courtesy of me and Jake. So we appreciate you guys. We uh, we hope you enjoy March, and we hope you fill out this bracket. And I look forward to it. And we'll be um, updating the bracket and sending it out here shortly. So and it's got a passcode. So I'll uh, I'll get that out to you guys. As I soon mean, as it's the free, comes right? Out. Yeah, it's free. So it's no entry fee. So I you mean, might as well do you it. Got a chance to win potentially fifty bucks. That's probably yeah. three times the Culver's. Yeah. I mean, I don't know about for me. Because every time I go, it's 20, but at least two. Yeah. But for a normal person, yeah. it's probably three. Yeah. And a shirt. And a shirt with our logo but on it. So. Anyways, yeah. Um, Just, I just, I'm very curious to see what Illinois, where they draw and who they draw mm-hmm. and where. Um, Because I would be very interested in driving to see him play again. Yeah. Um, I, just, I don't know. I'm very, ner- I'm very nervous about this team now you sound anxious i thought i thought they would make a run in the big 10 tournament i did and i liked their bracket i liked that they were going to avoid purdue until the big game um i really think they had a chance versus northwestern again it seems to me that illinois i know i'm starting to go back again but it seems to me that illinois doesn't play well when they play teams that are smaller than them Mm -hmm. because it seems to be like Northwestern smaller than us, and so is Penn State, and we're one in five versus teams like that that have like shifty guards, like that'll break you down. And I don't know, but Underwood and Coleman Hawkins called it like bougie, like booty boot, ball, booty ball. Like you can't guard Pickett in the post because he gets a foul. I'll agree there, but like it just seems to be when Illinois plays teams that are their size and like lengthy, it just seems like they play better. But anyways, I like their chance. Like they, like then they they would have got another crack at Indiana if they beat Northwestern today. But it is what it is. I don't think they were going any higher than a six, unless they won the Big Ten tournament. They might have been a five. So even if they beat they beat Penn State and lost to Northwestern, I still think they're they would have been an eight or nine. Yeah, and that's okay. But I still think they can beat anybody. I still think they're very dangerous. And I do. I agree. I've said that. I think they can beat anybody. And there's not a lot of – most teams – I don't think a lot of teams can say that. Yeah. It'll be interesting. I can't wait and look forward to talking about it Sunday. Jake, you got anything else to add? No. All right. Everybody have a good weekend.